Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick little video going through the process to update your Express LRS radio, whether that is something like this Radio Master TX16S, where I have one of the Radio Master Ranger modules in the back, or whether it's a radio that actually has it internal. Now, I did a video a little while ago where I showed you how to update the receivers via the Wi Fi method. It's my preferred method, and guess what? You can use exactly the same method to update your radio too. But this gentleman here, asked the specific question for me to make this video. So who am I to argue with a great idea like that? Now this video is absolutely aimed at those of you that are relatively new to this. If you've been running ExpressRS for a little while, none of the information in this video is going to be new. As I'm recording this, ExpressLRS 3.3 is the current version and there have been a couple of new things added, another option in particular of a way that you can update your radio. Big tip for those of you that are new to Express LRS is that the radio that you are using and the receiver that you flash need to be on the same major version for it to work. But what does that mean? Well, if this module is flashed with Express LRS 3.1, it'll talk to Express LRS receivers on 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. .3. Or if this is on version 3.3, the latest version as I'm recording this, then it will basically talk to any version 3 receivers. Um, the challenge comes that if when you start updating from one version to another, you do need to update your radio as well, which is why it's kind of useful to make this companion video for those of you that might be in the process of updating stuff. And obviously when Express LRS version 4 comes out, we start updating our receivers to Express LRS version 4, we're going to have to update our radios to 4.2. And I would recommend keeping up to date with the Express LRS stuff. They are adding some fantastic features every time they do a release. So the first thing to talk about is the fact that you can turn on Wi-Fi mode with an Express LRS radio or module in the same way that you can do with a receiver. What you have to do is go into the Express LRS Lua script. Usually that's pressing the system button on the radio and then clicking on the Express LRS Lua script and it will populate. And if you scroll down, there's the Wi-Fi connectivity options. You can go in there and you can turn on Wi-Fi. That will create a Wi-Fi hotspot called Express LRS TX in this instance, as opposed to RX for a receiver. And you can connect to it by your computer and then look at the configuration. If it is asking you for a password, the password, just like receiver, is Express LRS, no spaces, all in lower case. By doing it this way, you can look at the version of the code that's on there. In version 3 of Express LRS, you can actually see this via the Lua script, which is a great addition. But you can also see, see the name of the target. You can download the existing firmware that's on there. It's a really handy thing to do. Pro tip for this, if you are trying to run the script and it doesn't populate like this, it probably means that you don't have CRSF turned on, either internally if it is a CRSF module that's inside the radio or for the external RF option which is when you have a module. Be aware of that. I would personally set up a module on the radio without any fancy stuff on it just for the updating and then it means that you never get into a pickle. So there are currently three ways to update the radio or the module, and one of them is pretty new. It's only really come in in the last version of Express LRS Configurator and the latest versions of HTX, and that is HTX Pass-Through. You won't always see this as an option depending on what you've selected to flash, but it allows you to plug the USB cable into the data port it's usually going to be USC connection on the radio. And when the radio comes up, there are going to be a number of options. Use it as a joystick, data connection, or crucially, there'll be one called debug mode. Putting it in debug mode then basically connects that USB cable right into the Express LRS module and you can use it for things like that. At that point, the radio isn't running. It's just acting like a connection. There's limited support for this as of time of recording. Things like the Radio Master Zorro actually have support for it, but other radios don't yet. I'm sure it will become a far more common way to do it as we move forward. The second way to do it is via a UART or a USB cable. Now, this is the way that I tend to do it for modules, and it's my preferred method for modules, because by plugging a module into the USB connection, it will not only power it, but it means then you have a direct link. There's 
easy and you don't have to be off the house Wi-Fi to connect to the internet in order to your builds and things. It's perfect for modern modules like the Radio Master Ranger series. Older stuff can need things like dip switches or DFU buttons to be pressed. Check the manual for the unit that you have, but if it's pretty modern stuff and not some of the first generation of hardware that came out for Express LRS, it's just going to work pretty straightforwardly. And the last one is my favourite way to do most things in Express LRS, and that is via Wi-Fi. Again, as we've just looked at, you can put the radio or module into Wi-Fi mode and connect to it, and in there is the option to click Update. So you can create the firmware for it like you would with a receiver, and then turn on Wi-Fi, connect to it, and update it just like you would a receiver. However, I have sometimes struggled with this method for TX units. It's not as bulletproof from some of the playing that I've done here. I think that is because some of that earlier hardware played a little bit fast and loose with the specs and didn't really fully support everything. But the pro tip is, is one of these will absolutely work for you. So don't worry if one of them fails, just try one of the others. So let me kind of give you a quick demo of how I do this. Well, first and foremost, of course, we need to download the latest Express LRS configurator onto your computer. I'll put links down below to this. There are lots of different versions for Windows, Linux, and other stuff too. I'm running Windows, so that's what I've installed on my computer. It's uh, the latest version as I'm recording this. Yours might look a little bit different if you are watching this video a couple of months in the future. I would always, first of all, put the radio into Wi-Fi mode, as we've already looked at. Go and connect to that Express LRS TX Wi-Fi access point and just have a quick look at what the radio is set to. You'll be able to see the old version and you will be able to see all the other information on there, including the target name. It's just useful to look at that. You can also download the firmware as well, but I just like to triple check that the Wi-Fi stuff is all working, that I have that as an option. Out of Express LRS version 3 and later, you can also read the version of the flashed firmware that's on the radio directly from the Lua script. It's here in the bottom left-hand corner. I will then disconnect from the radio, and then I would connect to the internet as I would normally on my computer, and then in Express LRS Configurator, go through the standard stuff. I would make sure I'm selecting the latest version at the top, then scroll down, and then search for the device that I'm looking for and the specific device I'm interested in. The great thing is, is with Express LRS now, is all this stuff is actually given the right names. So, for example, the Ranger Micro that's in the back of my TX16S is a 2.4 gig unit. It's absolutely listed. So all I have to do is to find that information. Then it's about answering and setting it up in exactly the same way as you do for your receivers in terms of the regulatory domain, in terms of whether or not you want a binding phrase. All those things need to be the same as the receivers so that you can get everything bound and everything's going to work together. Now, at this point, there are two different ways to do it, depending on whether or not I'm going to flash it via Wi-Fi or I'm going to update it via a USB cable. And that depends on whether or not the Express LRS stuff is inside the radio, hidden away, or whether it's a module that I can unclip out the back. If it's an internal module, then I will just select Wi-Fi as the option in Configurator, and I will click on Build. And once that firmware is built, I will just pop that on the desktop, and those of you that have already watched the receiver update video will be starting to feel very comfortable right now, because it's exactly the same process. Then I would go back onto the radio, put the radio Express LRS stuff into the Wi-Fi access mode, reconnect to that, bring up the web page, and then in the firmware area, click upload, upload that firmware file, and click on update. It will then go through the update and get to the end, and then I would power cycle the radio, and you should find that you're on the latest and greatest version. And this is why I like the Wi-Fi stuff, because that will also work as well with the module at the back. If you don't want to unclip the module, or you maybe got something over the top of it, or it's one of those that's really quite hard and sticky to get out of the back of the radio because of the tolerances of the plastic, then you know what? You can use exactly that same Wi-Fi method to do a module that's in the back of the radio. However, for me, the way I like to do an external module is I like to do it as build and flash. So what I'll do is take the module out the back of the radio, plug it into the computer via a USB cable, wait for it to appear on the computer, and then I will do an option for UART, 
and then at the bottom click build and flash and what that will do is it will not only build the firmware but then immediately try to flash it onto the module do make sure that the port is highlighted at the bottom of the configurator and it should all go through swimmingly pro tip on this stuff is sometimes the name of the firmware file will change i've had technology in here for review that has been using early beta versions of express lrs that then subsequently has been officially supported and the target definitions change a little bit occasionally you will get a warning if you have an early version of some Express LRS kit when you go to flash it that the version that you're flashing is not the right one for the hardware. If you ever see that, stop, go back and triple check that you have selected the right hardware manufacturer and the right specific piece of hardware for your piece of technology. If you're not sure, then usually the manufacturer will have something on their website about which one you should use. Last pro tip for you is if you are upgrading your radio to a new version, particularly when you're going from a major version, so maybe Express LRS version 2 to version 3 or 3 to 4, then definitely remember to download and update the Lua script that's on the SD card. Put it in this location here and then when you run it, it'll work fine next time. Typically, the Express LRS Lua script is specific for the major version that you are using. So if you update your module from version 3.1 to version 3.3 you're probably going to be fine but if your radio was on 2.1 and you upgraded it to 3.3 you definitely need to upgrade that Lua script. So there you have it that's as easy as it is it is particularly complicated my recommendation would be if you have a module that has a USB cable pop it out the back of the radio plug that module into the computer using a USB cable and use the uh, build and flash option to directly update the module if you have an internal module, my recommendation for right now would be use the Wi-Fi method. Put the module into Wi-Fi mode via the Lua script, connect to it on your computer and flash it just like you would a receiver. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless 360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.